Good evening, I'm Shana Humphreys. We are doing something a little different today at 6. Last week marked two years since the Oxford High School shooting. That senseless act left Oxford and many surrounding communities shattered. On Friday of this week, the person responsible will be sentenced. But before all of the attention goes to Judge Kwame Rowe's courtroom, we wanted to focus on the lives that were taken by that heinous act. We extended an invitation to the families of Justin Schilling, Madison Baldwin, Tate Meir, and Hannah St. Juliana. Two of those families accepted. We have decided to run these interviews in their entirety with no commercial breaks as part of our dedication to honoring their young lives. Tonight, we begin with a sit-down interview with our Sandra Ali and Justin Schilling's parents. They want you to know what these last two years without their son have been like and how they want Justin to be remembered. Jill and Craig, let's start by talking about Justin. What was he like? What do you want people to remember most about him? I mean, Justin was so beloved by everyone who knew him. Um, being family, friends, his coworkers, he just uplifted people and when you were around him you felt seen and heard. He was very intuitive and empathic um, and just so full of life. You know, on top of being this amazing, high achieving, honor roll um, student, great athlete, great friend, and he just, he lit up the room. He had that energy where you were, you know, people were attracted to him. Um, so just, um, a bright light, a very happy, happy young man. I will never, um, I'll never forget his um, work ethic and the, the, the dedication that he put in, the, the, everything that he did. Um, he was very uh, thorough and he was very hardworking and determined. Um, when he set his mind on something, it was, he wasn't finished until he was 100% set on the outcome and what he, the information that he got, whatever it was, you know, his homework, um, his, his jobs, you know, he, if, if there was still something that needed to get washed up or whatever, he'd still go and grab it, you know. Um, he was a, a very thoughtful young man. Um, uh, his charisma and, you know, his energy is just really something that you can't just, you know, implement into anybody, you know. It's something that develops over the course of a life and, and, they, and he put everything into it. And, um, he maintained himself very well, and I, I could never um, ask for anything different. I'm so proud of the, the individual that he was. Yeah, and Craig, you mentioned over the course of a life. Is there a memory, a moment, or a time that stands out in particular to either one of you? Probably more uh, recent one was going to Oakland University. I believe it was September or October before the shooting, and that's where he planned to attend college. And he was just, you know, so excited and. He, um, we got to do a tour and a walkthrough, and I'll never forget uh, this young lady who was guiding us, who was also a student. He would not let her hold the door. You know, he just was that gentleman. old school gentleman, yes. And just that memory of going out to eat after, and he was just so full of um, hope. He had big plans for the future. And obviously without ever reliving that day and reliving the harrowing events of that day, um, with almost two years going by, mm -hmm. does it get easier? Does the grief just change? Talk to me a little bit about that process. Ahead, Craig. Every day is um, a struggle. Um, the normal, just driving to work, it's, it's hard to do. Um, the anxiety, um, it's, it's a feeling that you don't experience that I've never experienced before, so um, it's kind of hard to deal with because I'm not used to it. You know, it's, um, the emotions are, are always there. I mean, they're just, and they come and go at random times, you know, the most, um, in not most appropriate time or inappropriate time, you know, it's, um, it's very difficult to, um, to maintain the kind of person that you used to be and when you're dealing with this level of grief it's um every day sucks <laughs> there's nothing uh, there's nothing that can change that and um time time doesn't matter anymore to me i mean it's just i mean it's just a, a number and 
it's it just feels like it's stalled you know as far as I mean you look in a mirror and you see yourself getting older gray hair it's just really hard to know that he doesn't he doesn't get that And Jill, I'm sure, like Craig, the pain doesn't ever really go away. It just changes. It just changes. It does not go away. It'll never, it'll never go away. Um, I'm grateful for my faith in God, for my family and friends that I have to lean on so consistently uh, just to make it through every day. If I didn't have my faith, you know, and I'm, I'm not a super religious person, but I do believe in God and Jesus and I'm spiritual, so... For me, I've had to focus on building that spiritual connection to Justin, <clears throat> and how sad is that, right? I mean, I don't, <laughs> physically he's not here, but spiritually he's with us, and I feel him with us, and I believe that, so I have to learn how to nurture that connection, be it dreaming about him, journaling to him, you know, so um, that's something that has helped sustain me, definitely my faith. Also just connecting with his friends. You know, we're coming up on the 30th, so we plan, I plan to gather with his friends at the cemetery and then go back to the house and just have some food and be with them. But their stories keep him alive and being around their youth and um, their energy reminds me so much of him. So I find comfort in that. But the grief is constant. Um, it's crippling. I have days where I have no more tears left. <laughs> You know, and it's, I think what makes the grief harder is that this was such a preventable tragedy. When you lose a child to senseless gun violence, it's almost unbearable. I, I feel so grateful that I'm here for my kids who are still here and my family, but it's something I would wish nobody to ever um, experience because it's extremely difficult just to function. And Craig, how has this tested your faith? I know Jill just talked about her faith and her spirituality and really leaning on folks for support. Sure. Um, a lot of the same. Um, I mean, I'm not a big um, religious guy. Um, I do believe in, um, you know, the uh, the one being and the, you know, the uh, creator. Um, so I, I do feel it. I feel that and the energy, I feel um, him and the, the air that I breathe and the, you know, I, I get that, you know, uh, cold chill or something and, and I, I will look and I, I mean, it won't be anything there, but, you know, I'll know where it came from. I, I just have a sense of feeling of where it comes from and, you know, a, or a warm feeling, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, I, you know, just pay attention to those small things and it, it sparks a memory or um, a thought about him, you know, and then sometimes it's a welcome thought and sometimes he, he does lose it. And you hear so often from parents who are dealing with grief about um, one way of coping is put, doing something in their honor, is doing something in their memory. And with Justin, when we right. talk about Justin, we talk about organ donation and yes. how that's played a big part in your yes. life. Yes, we were blessed to be able to have that option. And yeah. I feel it was really a gift for us as well. You know, we talk about gift of life. We're helping to save others, but um, it did help save my sanity knowing that we were able to help six people. You know, Justin's gift saved six lives. Tell us a little bit about, that. for folks who don't yeah. know, um, Justin's mm -hmm. connection to organ donation and the, the specifics. Share that with us. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, I went, it was it was a couple months before all of this happened where I had a conversation with him and he um, alluded to the fact that he wanted to be an organ donor and um, I wanted to make it, it known that it was his decision 100% to be the organ donor. Um, we were just only there to facilitate because we're his guardian. So um, this was his right. choice 100%. Yeah. And I just want, I mean, I, I'm, I'm so happy like Jill says and to be able to help facilitate that and to, you know, help, um, you know, future generations, you know, from in different families in the different parts of the country. And I mean, this was several months before. Yes, this was absolutely um, a 
the conversation that we had before everything happened. And what did you think of it at that time? Did you even give it that much thought? I, I did not. Um, I mean, you don't really have, like, have a conversation like that with your child, but uh, the fact that it was something that he brought up almost as it was like alluding to something was going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, it just, I mean, the, the way that it all came about and the way that it was brought up and the conversation at that time, at that moment was, was just an, was awkward, but I mean, it, it was heartfelt and it was genuine and and, and for him, it was... Yeah, that's who he was, right? A giver. It was, yeah, it was my honor <laughs> to about honor And that him. didn't surprise you that he came to that decision months no, before this not. happened? Absolutely no. not. No. And I think in the hospital, I don't want to speak for both of us, but it seemed like an instant yes. You know, it wasn't something that we felt conflicted on. Yeah, I mean... Because I, you knew was, what his wishes were. That there was no way that I was not right. going to honor his wishes. Right. There was no way I could, I could do that. So tell us a little bit about that journey of, of organ donation and, and what came about. Yeah. Well, I know um, Clay and I, Justin's younger brother, we re recently went to Ann Arbor, Gift of Life, to do a video working on a project to help other people who are going through this process. So for me, with the grieving, it really helps to have that bright light and something to look forward to, something positive, you know, to keep his legacy going. So again, I feel like the opportunity to become an organ donor. Um, you know, when you're a family going through this tragedy, it's a gift for us. It's something that is hopeful, something that is beautiful. And even initially for me as a mom, it was a selfish decision because it was like, oh, a part of him is gonna stay here on earth. It was only later learning that he saved six lives that we got to really embrace that part of it, that part of being proud knowing Justin's a hero. Have you ever been able to meet any of those people? No. Well, we've Were had some, co some correspondence. Yeah, there's some a, correspondence. There's, there's a process involved that uh, it's, you know, um, proven, it worked, you know, through and through, and uh, we have every um, intention of, once it gets to that point, to be able to, um, you know, make a connection. Would like you that. like to? Oh, I would love to. Yeah, I yeah mean, when absolutely. I do receive letters, it's yeah. it's a huge blessing. But that is up to them, mm -hmm. you sure. know, if, if and when they're ever, ever ready to reach out. But I would absolutely love to, of course. I would think that that would give you some peace, right? Yes, yes. And yeah. I, I see inspiration with um, Justin's friends as well. You know, I did a project with Gift of Life where we were able to get these little Justin bears out to the entire high school and they had information on how to become an organ donor, which is really simple. You can just go to giftoflifemichigan.org. Um, they had a beautiful little bracelet, but many of these kids save these bears. Now, if they're at Michigan State or U of M, you know, I get messages and pictures where they've become organ donors as well. So I think it's helped them. I, I would like to believe, um, deal with their grieving process as well, just knowing that Justin is a hero. Absolutely. Um, it's it's it sucks to be in that position, but and at the same time, it is somewhat rewarding and to be able to influence or have an influence on, you know, the future in a way that ours got taken away from us. You know, and, and you mentioned holding on to that positivity and that hope for the future. You've actually started a foundation already. That's correct. We I, we've started the Chooch Foundation. Um, the Chooch Foundation is um, an acronym. It's a his name, uh, Chu, or was, Chooch is a nickname that we we had for him as a as a young child, and we kind of carried it all the way through. And I've taken the Chooch and broken down to an acronym, staying where the foundation is basically how we op, what we operate on is is how Justin uh, Justin would operate, and we, when we care and help others, often creates hope, and that's that's what Chooch is about. You know, we want to we're a community based foundation uh, where we want to uh, give back to the community and help out others in, in need uh, uh, through the grief process, um, through any type of PTSD, um, you know, veterans, we have a, all, we have our full status, so um, we, want, we want to be able to give back, you know, and the community did so much for us in the beginning and helped us through the, such a difficult time that it was important uh, for me to, or for us to be able to uh, give back mm -hmm. to the community, and, and that's where Chooch came from. And, uh, we, uh, we're, we're slowly moving, uh, we're trying to get some traction. We're working on a, a couple of projects, um, bowling, uh, bowling scholarship as the next one coming up, a bowling, big bowling tournament. Um, we did a coach's care initiative, um, basically a, 
just to kind of emphasize the importance of mental health and the school system and you know a lot of times it's um, it's only goes as far as the teachers and you know counselors and but you know the coaches are there too you know mm -hmm. coaches care about the, the kids too and and they interact with our kids on a, on a le different level than teachers and a different level than we would so it's important to to have some tools for them to be able to um, you know reach out if they if there's if they identify something as a, a potential yeah. Problem. And you know, Craig mentions coaches, and we talked a, a lot about how Justin was just an A plus student. I mean, just a, a scholar, um, bright future. But yes. you know, we don't often talk that much about his athleticism. I mean, he was an athlete as well. Right. Right. Co-captain of the bowling team. I know that yeah, was special that, between you know, Dad and him. Yeah, I mean, he was a, a very um, driven athlete. You know, he definitely would not uh, settle for. You know, second best, and he would uh, give everything that he had 100%. All the, and uh, you know, he was very. Um, I mean, I've spent hours and hours and days in bowling alleys and uh, golf course, and trying to uh, mm -hmm. just observing him. And you know, as a, a, a proud father moment, when you have um, somebody from the other team come up to their parent who just happened to be sitting next to you, and then say something about your kid saying, I remember that kid, he's such a cool guy. I remember him from last year. Then it, it's something that, you know, it makes you feel like you're doing the right thing, you know, and it gives you that, that sense of pride. And, you know, that's just him, you know, it's, it, it says it all. Yeah. I mean, we've watched all the news conferences, right, over the last couple of years, and, you know, you hear different things from different families and, and other parents. Is there something that you wish that you could share some sort of nugget, some sort of um, piece of, of your heart that you wish that you could share with people that you wish people would know, either about Justin or about your family and what you've been through? I would just want people to focus on, focus on love, focus on giving, um, not just during the holiday season, but Something that's personal to me when I look at all four of these kids that were killed, they had a lot in common. You know, they were givers, they were the uplifters, they were um, all heart, being it, you know, heart of any sports team or heart of their friend group. So I think if we all focus on love and if people can, you know, just slow down a little bit in life and take the time to be kind to one another, it doesn't cost a thing, you know. Uh, we live in the society where we're constantly on social media and there's a lot of issues with mental health and tearing each other down, but we don't have to live like that. Like, we can just be kind and nice to people because it feels good and it's free. And I think that's how Justin really lived. He lived by the golden rule. You know, do unto others as you'll have them, do unto yourself. And anybody can emulate that and be more like Justin. And I try. You know, he inspires me as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I I will hit on it again. I I've um, I've never seen a, a kid work as hard as him. And when uh, it was time to get the work done, that's you know that's where he was at and um, putting in the time that needed. And that's how you get to to be that you know the uh, the winner of the Oxford Cup. You know mm -hmm. the that, to that level. It doesn't come just by uh, playing video games and um, you know it, just hoping that it just lands in in your lap. There, it's it's the time. And that's that's what I would love to be able to put out there would be that, you know, put the work in and put the time in and, you know, um, set aside the distractions, you know, for, you know, later in life when, you know, you're, you have more time, you know, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, that's it, you know, I mean, go for it, don't, uh, you know, don't just lollygag, you know. My short. Yeah, what a legacy, right, for him yes. to leave behind. Well, Jill and Craig, I know this is super hard to do. It's not easy to be mm -hmm. so open and so vulnerable, but I appreciate both of you um, opening up to us Thank that way. you. And I, and I did want to share as well, I know Dad has his foundation, and I think that that's wonderful. Um, I've launched a foundation as well to honor Justin. I've partnered with Four County Community Foundation, which is a local nonprofit, and we're going to be opening a fund for him that is all about conservation, planting trees, clean water, clean air. Um, it's called For the Love of Nature, the Forever Justin Schilling Foundation. And I did provide you guys, we've got a nice barcode where you can scan 
uh, website to learn more. But really what this is going to be focused on is preserving Michigan's Great Lakes, clean water, clean air. Um, when I really thought about all the good memories with Justin and my kids, it all goes back to, you know, swimming in Lake Huron mm -hmm. and finding Petoskey stones or climbing the dunes of Lake Michigan. And um, he loved hammocking with his friends and, you know, hunting with his dad and camping and fishing. So this is something that can last generations, you know, when we're planting trees and conserving the environment in his name. He was very um, concerned with the environment, so I felt something he would really be on board with. But I encourage um, everyone to check it out if they feel they want to donate. You know, it is open now. And we're going to be doing community events as well in the spring, okay. just bringing people together, walkathons and nature trails and things like that. And so, is that linked to the Facebook page? Uh, we don't have a Facebook page yet, but the Four County Community Foundation um, has their own website. And even if you just Google Forever Justin Schilling Foundation, it'll okay. be the first link. Okay, we'll make sure that folks Thank know you. how to get to that Appreciate as well. Appreciate that. Thank well, you both well, so much. At, yeah. We are at the chooch.org the chooch is our website. And okay, we we'll have, make sure to link yeah, that we as well. List. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank Keep you. up the good work. What a beautiful memory. What a great way to honor his legacy. Appreciate Thank, it. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your you. time. We really just cannot thank Craig and Jill enough for their strength and vulnerability in sharing those memories of Justin with us.